Joining us now to break down these latest developments is Boris Epstein, an attorney and Trump 2020 advisory board member. So, Boris, when we look at these latest developments regarding Michael Flynn, do you think that this is a big of a scandal as a lot of the people in the conservative media are making it out to be? Or do you think that maybe some on the left do have a point that unmasking isn't necessarily a big deal? Hey, Alex, good to be with you, my friend. Hope you're staying safe. Of course, it's a huge deal, not just the unmasking, but then the subsequent leaking to the Washington Post, the David Ignatius article, that is a huge deal. Leaking of classified information is a federal crime. There's no two ways about it. So the issue is, why was General Flynn unmasked? And then what was the reason for the unmasking? What, were the, what was the reason behind the requests? And out of it also, we know that some perjury has already come out. The former ambassador to the UN, Samantha Power, stated under oath that she did not, quote unquote, recollect requesting an unmasking of General Flynn. But there it is in black and white, several requests, including two in one day from Samantha Power. And Boris, I think you bring up an important point because a lot of critics of this investigation will say, well, unmasking happens all the time. But this isn't just about the unmasking. It's the idea that right. there was unmasking, then there was selective leaks in order to control the narrative being had in the media in order to sway the public to support this Russia investigation that lasted for two and a half years. And there's also other wrongdoings. I mean, we could look to the Horowitz report where FISA abuses were taking place. And now we have this 302 form, which could answer a lot of questions that went missing. What do you make of this 302 sure. form? Would that answer a lot of our questions? Well, let's put it all together, Alex. Let's go from the unmasking to the leaking and then to the obvious wrongful questioning and then railroading of General Michael Flynn. Of course, we need the 302. 302 are those notes that specify and lay out what happened during the questioning. We found out from the 302 notes of the questioning of Hillary Clinton in 2016 that they broke blackberries with hammers in the Clinton State Department. So of course, the 302s are important. And it is very curious that the FBI magically has lost those. And now we know that the people conducting and preparing for that interview of General Flynn went in there wanting to put him in a bad place. We have that quote where it says, what's our goal here? Is it the truth or to get him to lie and then to either prosecute or get General Flynn fired? That's for Bill Priestap, who was in charge of counterintelligence of the FBI. One thing is clear, Alex, the head group of the FBI in late 2016 early 2017 was made up of terrible people. Comey, McCabe, Priestap, Strzok, Page, all people who were intent on ruining lives and on ruining the Trump presidency. And at the very least, what we do know is that these people were saying something behind closed doors and something very different out in public. I mean, we keep saying this idea. The whole point of Russian interference was to sow discord in the United States. And that's exactly what they got with this investigation. I mean, this was the most polarizing thing that has happened to our country in maybe years, if not decades. And now we see this case. Oh. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no. I said, you're totally right, Alex. You had the Democrats decrying, oh, Russia is trying to cause you know, cause discord in America, but that's exactly what Democrats, what Brennan, Clapper, and so many others, exactly what they did, turn American against American. And now what we're looking at right now is maybe some conservatives and Republicans trying to say uh, that this uh, whole Flynn case, if we could f just get this settled for once and for all, this will be the final kind of nail in the coffin of the Russia allegations. Because I think a lot of Democrats want to pursue what is happening to Flynn so they could say that something came out of this investigation. Because at this point, it's been essentially a total dud when it comes to Russian collusion on that front. And now we see the Judge Sullivan in this case appointing someone else to come in, an outside party. Uh, it's an immediate type of thing from what I'm understanding where they essentially have someone come in and make the other side of the argument even though the prosecution is not following through with the charges is this unusual completely unusual you could read a lot of writing about this a lot of caseloads a lot of a lot of information that will spell out that the judge in this case judge Sullivan absolutely has to follow the lead of the prosecution. When the prosecution says there's no more case, there's no more controversy. So the judge has no business appointing another, a former retired Judge Gleason, who's already written about this and wants to railroad General Flynn some more. Hmm. The point of it is that the judges are making this political. These are activist judges, and they should be in no way involved in the prosecutorial decision, which, which completely, completely sits with the executive branch, with the DOJ, and the DOJ wants to drop the case uh, uh, that's focused on the great American hero, General Flynn. They want to drop that case.
And Boris, someone explained this to me the other day just to make it a little bit more human, I guess, for people who don't pay attention to the insides of the DOJ. But if I punched you, for example, and you pressed charges against me, and then you decided, oh, you no. know what, I don't want to press charges against you, the judge can't all of a sudden come in and say, well, I'm going to press charges. That individual has no standing in order to do that. And that's essentially what's happening right now with the DOJ is they try to bring in maybe someone else to make that argument. I think that's just something that a lot of people will see through once we finally get through this Flynn case once and all, for all. But I'm sorry, just go imagine ahead. If a, imagine if a prosecutor tells you, you know what, we're good. You, we, we understand we made, the, we made a mistake or the previous prosecutors make a mistake. We're going to drop this case. And the judge says, no, no, not quite. I want to interject. I want to bring somebody else to argue. That is completely against set judicial precedent, totally against the facts and the rules of law in this country. That is not how we work under the American Constitution. When the DOJ and the prosecutor says it's done, it's done. I think that summarizes up this whole situation in general. A lot of people saying even from the very beginning, there was constitutional violations, there were Fourth Amendment violations. There's just so many things that go into this. And I think when people just focus on the unmasking, it's a little bit of a way to avoid having the bigger conversation of what took place. But Boris, I really appreciate you coming out tonight. Thank you.